<laughs> so it struck me yesterday, and as I look at the program today, you know, a big part of this is, is an Africa story. There's no way that we get to the SDG uh, unless Africa forges its own path. And today we're talking a lot about integrations of grids and off-grid, we're talking about integration of renewables and uh, more traditional fossil fuels from the past. And it seems to me that Africa's way forward is not to repeat the energy systems of the past. So you've had a really interesting life and career. You've lived all over the world, you've worked all over the world, you're now based back home in Nigeria, leading from the home front. From your perspective now, what does this look like? How does an international movement like this be of the most use? What I think we need to have is organizations and institutions like c for all show the evidence to our governments, our leaders, our people. This is where we are. This is what your access to energy is. This is what your access to effective energy is. This is what the gap is. Um, you know, this is where you're not, what you're not doing in terms of renewable, sustainable energy, et cetera. And then have those decisions and investments and solutions come from us. Um, if you look at all the money that's going into funding renewables and sustainable energy types of things, very little of that funding is African. So when you come from the outside and try to tell us what to do or encourage us to do the right thing, you have to make sure that we're also part of the story. Because even if we take something as, I'm going to call it simple, as cook stoves, who is making the cook stoves and where are the cook stoves coming from? So if you have to make the cook stoves in another continent and ship them to Africa and then have the funding for the cook stoves also come from the outside, then of course we're going to have a limited take up of those. You're never going to have a 100% conversion into the clean cook stove story. So the story has to be localized. It has to be embraced by ourselves in Africa. And I think the way to do that is to make sure that we are in those different discussions. From the outside, just to say do this or do have all the funding come from the outside, I just don't see it as, as a successful way forward. Africa is not unique in a, as a continent in needing to see better investment climate, better governance, mm -hmm. etc. But if we think about 600 million Africans who need to get access to energy, that this, there would seem to be an urgency about you know, management and governance improving. Now, as a, as a global movement that produces and works on you know, the, the regulatory environment, and we now have, with the work led by the World Bank, indicators across 111 countries of the regulatory health of every country. You know, is, the, is the level playing field there for off-grid? Is the level playing field there for renewables? You know, how does an international movement effectively use that data and evidence in a way that supports Africans to improve their governance rather than coming in and pointing the finger? It's the pointing to the finger about what doesn't work, but it's also about encouraging and supporting what can actually be done. Getting the governance right around what matters and how do we lift people out of poverty, because ultimately this is what we're talking about. The, having access to energy, we already know what it unlocks in terms of business potential and um, GDP growth, and we know what it means in terms of improving health care and improving education. So we know this, but I think having specific data for countries and having the discussion in country in a non-judgmental way, but at the same time, you know, prodding people and saying, look, you know, they've been able to do better over here. You should, you know, see what you can also do to make the situation better in your country, I think can make a huge difference. And this is why I'm happy to be on the board, because I feel like the, the potential for this movement is huge and it cuts across not just energy but governance and health and agriculture and education and all the things that we need to get together, get fixed in a way so the development can actually occur. From your perspective as a banker, as a philanthropist, you've said that we need to come in behind African leadership. Mm -hmm. Part of that leadership has to be female. We have to be uh, comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Are there other sort of top tips that you would give this leadership forum for how to drive action? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of patronizing help that I think is a turnoff for most Africans. So I, I think that the, the, the tip is us working together hand in hand and really making a concerted effort to bring to the table 
Africans who can make a difference. So it's about us working together in a non patronizing, okay, I know everything and you don't know everything, so I'm gonna come and teach you how to do it. I think it's, it's, it's a subtle thing and nobody really means to do it, but it's a, it's a mindset that I think has been developed over the years, especially with the way aid has been administered and you know support has been given. It's always been in a uh, non-even way. So, uh, I, I think that that's a very, very different narrative than the narrative that you often hear around the Sustainable Development Goals, a very different narrative than you often hear when talking about climate action. Mm -hmm. And I think having you as a leader within the SE for All movement and bringing, that, uh, bringing us back to that point and reminding us of what will work sustainably for the future is very important. Mm -hmm. So I'm delighted to be reunited with you in SE for All. So am I. So, so it's a very small world when you can build your careers and come together again and again. Mm. Zuera is one of the smartest bankers there is out there, now helping Aliko Dangote and his group be a real force for change in Africa. Please heed her words, listen to the wisdom, and have a great day focused on how do we really build markets that deliver integrated energy systems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel.